Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to share my eight favorite hacks to sell more cars in your dealership. So this video is for you if you're a car sales manager, general manager, dealership owner, if, and if uh, you're looking to sell more cars while at the same time reducing your advertising costs. And if you're a car sales professional, listen to this video very carefully because I'm going to show you how to generate your own leads and your own traffic inside your own store. And this will work whatever you're selling right now, whatever brands and wherever you are. So if you don't know me, my name is Mark. I'm the founder here at Autobahn Digital and Puzzle Auto. I worked into two stores, Volkswagen and Acura dealerships. I also work with OEMs such as General Motors, Volkswagen of America, and also Audi. Fast forward today, my company has managed over 800 thousand car shoppers and that's been done using Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, but also using my own virtual BDC for car dealerships, managing those leads and booking appointments for the dealerships. Also, I've been personally involved in uh, managing or investing over 35 millions in ad spend in the automotive space alone. Everything I'm going to share in this video is going to help you generate more sales without spending more on advertising, whatever the brand you're selling and wherever you are. Okay, cool. So in this video, I want to share eight hacks I'm using to help my clients in a better ways. Um, it's always pretty much the same thing. It's by respecting those core principles, you can make it work pretty much every time, right? There are some things you can control, but if you can control 99% of what you're doing online, it will give you um, the chance to be ahead of your competitors very easily. So I see advertising and online marketing a little bit like food, right? It's like recipes. So if you're if you keep putting the same ingredients in, you're going to have the same baked goods at the end, right? So if you keep, you know, changing stuff and not respecting the game and not respecting what you should be doing, it's going to be um, very unpredictable in terms of results. You might, you know, discover like a crazy way um, to generate high quality uh, leads and sales. But what's really going to happen is basically that you're going to be uh, burning through your money, um, going through like poor, uh, poorly set strategies, um, you know, spending a ton of money and time and energy on things that don't work. So I wanted to save you um, the pain here. So let's go to act number one. So addressing car buyers pain points. Okay, so the prospects has to feel that you're speaking to them. Whatever the medium, whatever the channel, whether it's on Facebook, whatever it's video, whatever it's on Google, you have to make sure you're speaking to the right customer. Okay, so I, I, I took this super cool quote I, I really like for advertising. So if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So what this means is that if you're creating an ad that's targeted to too many people or it's not excluding, you know, the people you don't want to work with, or it's for everyone, it's going to be, um, you know, flavorless, if that makes sense. No one's going to feel they're being involved or addressed by this ad. So this is super key. I'd rather have you in any marketing efforts, whether organic and paid. I'll explain that a little bit later, but I'd rather have you, um, you know, generate like um, a text or an ad that speaks to a very specific person and create a little bit more ads just to make sure you get one ad to address everyone you're trying to target versus going way too general in terms of cars, um, like the intent, the persona as well, you know, the type of buyer you're looking at, um, that kind of thing. Okay. So, um, key principle here, every car buyer, um, has needs or wants or both. Okay. Um, you know, shopper mindset or, you know, when we're all shopping online or offline for that matter, we're looking to fill a need or a want, or sometimes a little bit of both. Usually a need would translate in something that would get us from point A to B. Um, a want would be something that gets us from A to B, but very quickly and with many features. So this is how you will see $9,000 cars and also $90,000 cars, right? You won't get faster to your destination. You got to respect city limits. And, um, you know, that being said, there's a lot of cars being sold for way more than the minimum, um, available purchase price, just because there's more value or at least perceived value for the customers, um, in their specific vehicles. 
And this is why if you go and look, there's more luxury brands right now than mass market brands, if you count them all, which is pretty interesting. Sure, volume is still at the hands, uh, you know, controlled by mass market brands like Hyundai, Honda, Chevrolet, you know, that kind of thing. But if you count them all, there's more BMWs, you know, the, the brands itself, not the actual like units on, on the road. Uh, Mercedes Benz, Audi, you know, Lexus, all that kind of thing. So it's pretty interesting. So this very like this easily shows consumer like consumers valuing more um, perceived value or status uh, when they're buying a car. OK, so a typical need you might you might want to address is change a vehicle that's old, broken down, that's costing a lot of money in maintenance um, and lost time, really. Um, you know, that could be one of the one or more reasons someone might need to change a car. OK, so on the other side, you get the want. So I want a new model. I want a more powerful car. I want an EV. Um, I want a more luxurious model, more features, uh, new tech. Right. Um, all these cars today have, uh, you know, big screens, Android Auto, wireless, CarPlay, that kind of thing. And many, many, many more features that once you get accustomed to, it's really hard to go back. Right. And this is why mainly OEMs such as Audi, Mercedes, um, and BMWs, um, you know, have introduced low entry points, uh, models just to get you in the door, like, like, um, get you in the machine, um, with a low cost sub $50,000 car that has the same logo as a $300,000 car or flagship in that, in that same brand. And then it's really hard to go back once you, you know, step into, into these brands to go back to a mass market brand, even though the value or the equipment might be equivalent or even better. OK, so th this is why this is how they're like playing this whole game. So it's your job to attract the right customer for your store. OK, so you have to be very specific and very intentional about what kind of custom like customers you're you're trying to attract. If you're not sure, grab a pen and paper and start listing the kind of customers you really like to work with. And then you have to tailor your offers, your ads, uh, your marketing efforts um, toward these guys, because if you were to draw like the perfect consumer in your mind, this is this should be the people you're talking to as like as soon as you do something related to marketing or sales. OK, this is super important. It's going to be a cha game changer. If you've been leaving everything to luck um, until now, it's going to be a game changer for you. Whatever business you're in right now, we're talking about car sales, but it's true for everyone. OK, OK, so two key components when you're creating anything that's looks like an ad or is not an ad, but like, you know, could be anything, right? Whatever you're using creative with AKA image or video and text, like the image and video is how you grab attention. OK, and the text is how you keep it. When you see those long form ads, you know, having like big chunks of text, um, the most common, you know, comment I get is, well, I'm not going to read all that or my prospects aren't going to read all that. Right. It's very applicable if you've ever seen uh, one of these super long uh, landing pages or sales pages where you can scroll for like half a minute until you get to the bottom. And there's so much text. Right. Of course, no one in their right, right mind would would consume the whole thing, except like professional copywriters. Um, but the thing is, is that the more um, pain points you're addressing inside your ad, the more efficient it's going to get. OK, so what you don't really see in these ads or these landing pages, um, just because you're not, you know, the typical human is not looking at this with a copywriting eye. Um, what really happens is that basically you're treating every single objection as a as a block of text or a paragraph. So you could do the same thing with ads in a shorter form. Um, so if common objections might be, you know, for auto loans or car loans might be about like uh, being um, denied at the, an, another dealership, that could be one portion of your ad. It could be about like experience about, the, um, you know, the um, you know, past customers, it might be uh, the credit score uh, related text, whatever. Right. If you want to um, 
uh, use my own like Facebook ad um, template, I'll make sure to drop it in the description. Um, it's, it's basically just like a fill in a form, you know, fill in, fill in the blanks just to build like the perfect ad. You can use it as well. Um, it's free. You can download it at, like at any moment. And um, just go back to this. What I've been using more and more and learning about is basically solution focused advertising. So if like we must assume that our customer or car buyer, prospect car buyer is has a need or a want or both, um, then I want to address. I want to I, I want to be able to outline whatever those needs are or those wants are right. Um, just to break it down, if you want to go for a new vehicle, the problem would be change for a new vehicle for a similar payment. That would that could be an example, right? I want a new car. I need to change for a new car. I got a lease that's, that ex, that is expiring um, soon or very shortly, and um, you know I want to drive pretty much the same car because I liked it or change, but I want to still be able to afford the car and keep the, the same payment. Has been um, a challenge lately with inflation. Uh, massive inflation, just people walking out of their leases and just for to drive the same car would be like 30% more. So that's been a challenge for you guys um, in car dealerships for sure. But there's a way to kind of build value over, you know, your offer to make it easier. So solution, creating an offer based on value, appeal to logic and emotions. So there's three ways I, I want to see. I, I want you guys to think about how to create offers, um, you know, uh, to address, you know, car buyers pain points. So there's logic emotions and, um, you know, you can really trigger people based on these two principles. So logic would be true cost your own and current vehicle versus a new, new, newer vehicle. And, um, you know, emotions would be driving a new car with more modern features, equipment, you know, it, it's better for the status as well. Some people really, really care about the status, having always like how like always driving the new car, that kind of things. It, it could be important for them. So when addressing um, car buyers pain points, since we're um, dealing with online customers right now, you kind of have to assume when you're um, meeting with customers in your office, it's a little bit easier to learn these things because you can ask those questions and they're, they're in front of you. So this is where buyer or prospect qualification comes into play. If you're in car sales, you know what I'm talking about. It's just about understanding whatever is like whatever button you have to push to, to make the sale right with your with, with your prospect, because everyone has something they care about and it's different. Um, but online, what we have to do is a little bit different since we have to assume whatever is going on in their mind, address objections up, up front and just, you know, keep going. OK, so two things. Um, need based advertising works uh, best on logical customers. So if you ever like worked at, you know, one of the Japanese uh, stores, Toyota, Honda, Suru, these tents, not always, but these tents um, to generally have like, you know, I, I would call them smarter buyers, not that the other ones are not smart, but they're a little bit more logical than uh, emotional um, for the most part. This is why you'll see more cash deals in those brands as well versus uh, one based at like brands just like maybe Chrysler, Jeep, Hyundai, BMW, pickup trucks, that kind of thing, or even, um, you know, luxury brands, um, other luxury brands, at least. So you 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 have to think about like, I want you to stop right now and really think about what kind of customers you have and how you could address their pain points just to, so you so you make sure to speak their language. OK. Um, one friend of mine is at a Subaru store and typically, you know, from everything that's going on, the other like um, finance directors, they're having a super hard time selling like warranties, extended warranties, you know, products, you know, PVR is lower. And this guy, he just understands how to speak to those customers and his PVR is basically two times and a half better than anyone else in the store. Same customers, same stores, you know, you, you might feel like it's luck after a week, but when it's been months and years, there's something that's different. Um, this guy specifically, he really understands how to be, you know, um, intentional about 
asking questions about you and about like how you feel and uh, what, what you're really looking for. And he listens. He listens really well. This is one key quality of this guy. So I, I you can use this whenever you're selling cars or you can also translate that to online. OK, let's jump to hack number two. Um, so I want to um, I want to jump um, to crafting offers for target customers. It, it blends in number one. So it's really it, it was just really important. You understand like how to address, um, you know, pain points before we jump to this. OK, so I want to jump to number two. Um, crafting offers for your target customer is uh, like can make or break an advertising campaign. And it also applies to whatever you're going to do that's organic or follow up or, or lead nurturing. OK, so these are the same ads, right? Or you might think so. Um, but I'm seeing so many of these from dealerships with like, you know, vague offers, not attractive offers, unattractive offers, you know, like I'm only asking you to consider switching to an ad that looks a little bit more like this. So, you know, strong offers I find have three very important components, urgency, scarcity, and curiosity. If you leave one of these on the side, it's going to hurt your performance. But if you use all three correctly, uh, we usually get really, really good uh, performing ads. So in this case, zero down, only six left. That's your scarcity. Curiosity from 1.99. APR. OK, incomplete um, information. Uh, always stay compliant in whatever like country or state you're in. But you can find ways to kind of make it fuzzy a little bit more or just offer choices and see, you know, how can people, you know, get in touch with you. See if you qualify for uh, up to 5500 uh, in additional rebates. And, uh, you know, that's again, uh, curiosity and urgency offer ends on uh, February. 21st. OK, it's a little bit different. I like to have the ads not ending at the end of the month because every one's doing the same thing end of the month and then it creates like fake. We'll, we'll cover that later, but it, it creates fake offers. And we're like, you know, in the auto industry, we're always like, like, you know, get it before the month end. Right. But customers that have been shopping around for a moment, understand that it's going to be the same offer or pretty much the same offer next month, right? A little bit more cash or, you know, APR will change a little bit, but just, you know, when you consider everything, it's pretty much the same price, right? Okay. So always ask yourself, would you be tempted to click on this ad using those three simple ideas, urgency, scarcity, curiosity. Okay. That's what I call lazy advertising this. It's quicker, but it doesn't work. So go back to this. The offer must resonate with your perfect buyer. So new vehicle levers um, that we, that you can pull, push and pull, right? Um, choice discounts, delays, so fast deliveries. If you have something in stock and you know the like the other guys don't have them um, because you bought them or maybe you're behind, they they, they sold them and you didn't. Um, easy tr transaction. People are like dreading the car buying process because the average car buyer spends four to five hours in the dealership buying a new car. It's absolutely insane. And, you know, if these guys by any chance visited more than one dealership, it's a full day's work, um, you know, just to try to buy a car and may like aside the fact that it's stressful for them. Most of them actually um, trade in uh, also pre owned levers, choice, price, vehicle quality. OK, so people um, see vehicles advertised. And one of the things I see often in the BDC is people asking maybe the, because they're out of town or out of state um, if the vehicle is in good, good quality and if they can rely on the pictures or have more pictures. OK, so if you have, you know, if you can show the car is in great condition, more power to you, it's going to help to sell auto loans, interest rate payments, ability to approve financing, even though maybe they got denied in um, another store. Maybe they're in, uh, in a tough situation. Maybe they're a student. Um, they just arrived in country, country or low history, like credit wise. Um, you can line it up uh, just like I showed you in, you know, hack number one, just to break all barriers and objections up front. So let's jump to uh, hack number three, leverage organic versus paid advertising. OK, so this is super cool because I've been obviously playing with a lot of ads in my agency. They, and, um, 
you know, it, it's super cool to see, you know, I kind of learn over time uh, from people selling cars, doing online, you know, organic content. I'm, I'm doing it myself. Uh, what you're looking at right now is organic content and it, it's pretty impressive, but it's important to know the difference and the outcome you're expecting. OK, because this is two different strategies. There's pros and cons. So I wanted to, to, um, to share them with you. So organic is really just about like, you know, posting videos, photos, um, social media, uh, posts, text, um, articles, blog art articles. I don't see that much in automotive, but still, um, or videos on YouTube. Okay. So pros it's free. It's evergreen because when I say evergreen, when you're building content or creating content, you're basically building like a database or a library of you selling your vehicles and your services which is pretty cool. So whenever people find you, if you've built like a library of like a hundred, 200, 500 videos, like short form and, and, or long form, it's going to nurture your own, um, you know, prospects and, you know, people shopping for your services and products while you're sleeping. Basically, that's what, ha that's, what's really happening. I know it sounds silly, but that's, what's really happening. And, I, I, I see it work for so many guys and just people coming in and I see it for me also, right? Um, I I'm living, I'm living it on my end with content, just people reaching out to me and saying, you know what? I, I, I want to buy whatever you have to sell. And it's true for cars as well. I know some people selling new cars, used cars, finance, like, oh, like finance specific products. Um, you know, maybe for a little bit more subprime or buy here, pay here, buy here, pay here. And it works the same way. It's just a matter of educating your customers, helping them make the right decision. And as you're doing so, you're building trust. Okay. Cons about this is it's more time consuming. Okay. It takes a longer time. If you are creating a couple of videos and expect to double your sales next month, you're probably wrong. Okay. Unless you go super viral and this is not something you can really manufacture, especially if you're starting it. Okay. So just keep that in mind, but it's more of a compounding effect. If that, if that makes sense, if you start creating content and you just putting like, you know, start putting more and more and more content online, it's going to draw more and more and more views. And those people are going to trickle down to your next videos, other videos, watch four, five, six videos of yours, and then get in touch with you in a, um, you know, in an industry where basically no one is doing that mixed with the fact that people actually like are scared of car salespeople because they don't want to get screwed. Right. Um, like creating video, which is pretty like probably the most, um, effective way to build trust with anyone. It's a game changer. Okay. And you can use these videos just to attract new people, whoever's coming in to leads. You can use those videos as well, you know, to nurture them or, um, to pique their interest with something else. And that's what I've been doing personally a lot. I've been having like introductions, demos, meeting with potential clients. And I send them like a video about something I covered that we, we discussed. Maybe the, the meeting was not long enough. I didn't have enough time, but I send them a couple of videos and then it raises up my status and my, you know, the, my perceived expertise as well, which is amazing. Okay. So you can do that as well when you're selling cars, keep that in mind. So this is it for organic basically. Um, paid purchasing impressions with the goal of generating clicks and leads. So basically it's whenever you have to put your credit card in buying some traffic and leads, um, this would be considered as paid advertising well, pros, short-term results, just, be, just because it's easier to get 100 or a million impressions on your ads or your offer, um, while using ads versus organic. Okay. Um, unless you have a, like a great, you know, following already, which is not the case for most of you guys or most of us, at least, um, it's a good way to test a few offers and try to see what's really biting at the other end. Right. It's also scalable because basically if you want to do $100 this month or $500 this month, um, and then it works, you're selling two, four, five cars from this, this budget. Um, there's nothing preventing you from bumping it up to 2,500 next month, right? So you can scale it, not infinitely because there's always a ceiling of addressable 
you know, car shoppers in your market, but at least there's ways to reach that ceiling a little bit faster versus organic. The challenge here is usually leads from, you know, online ads or digital ads are lower quality in the sense of that the tip that like the typical conversion ratio will be much lower than organically. Just to give you an example from what I've seen, um, anything like anyone I'm working with doing organic content versus, you know, paid ads, it's usually three to one. So the typical organic lead will give you a 30% chance of closing the sale. Whereas depending on the brand and many factors, it's going to be more like eight, 10 or 12% when you're doing it with paid ads. So it's a lot different. Um, so this is why I'm inviting you to consider doing both a little bit of organic, push your organic content as paid, and then try to tweak and, you know, twist what's, what's, uh, what's really working best and keep going with the organic traffic because the, the day you stop paying for ads, you know, the traffic and leads go down like this. You don't want it to be this way. You want to build a sustainable lead machine. And the only way to do it is through organic content. Okay. So one other thing before we jump to the next hack is uh, using Facebook marketplace car, uh, to post cards for free. Um, you can do it manually, um, which is uh, what a lot of you guys are doing right now. Um, but also there's ways or automated services. Um, if you are interested in this, just click the link below. I'll be, um, I could help you with that. It's just basically, um, getting the whole dealerships feed on, you know, a server and then pushing it back to Facebook in your name. So you, instead of like spending hours every, uh, every, every week, um, just inputting, like adding more cars to marketplace, that kind of thing. Um, you just, you could send like 252 vehicles online in a matter of just a few days and just collect the leads from these guys. Um, and whatever's happening next is yours to keep. So it's pretty like, it's a smart way to do it. If you ask me. Okay. So number four, this is super underutilized and I hope, I hope I can get, um, you know, I, I hope I can convince you to be using this technique in your store, whatever you're doing. Um, because this is really, really effective and it's super scalable and the return on investment on this thing is crazy. Okay. So what I want you to do is create content, uh, presenting your vehicles online. Okay. So not really like videos, walk arounds, not, not, not that kind of thing. You're doing presentations. Okay. So you'll be doing webinars just like this. Okay. This is like an image and Basically you build a super short deck outlining the different models, different features, price points. If you want, um, if you want to keep it a little bit more evergreen, just don't go too deep in pricing because it might change, but I want you to basically sell the car, um, in a video from 10 to 20 minutes online, you'll be uploading this video on YouTube. You don't need to edit anything. You don't go to crazy in terms of lighting, setup, mic, you don't need this. You don't need my camera, like a phone or a $50 webcam will do the trick. And your, you know, your Apple, like your AirPods or, you know, headset will do the trick as well because there's no one doing this. And basically what you want to do is create like a short, um, webinar about like informing and educating your customers about this specific models, the differences, what you like about it. Um, you know, specific, like specific things. And as you're doing this, you're just creating content you can reuse in the future for a full year, perhaps even more. And if you're selling new and used cars and, um, you'll, you'll be just generating new traffic slowly from online sources, um, because you, you can just host this on YouTube and you can push it on various social media, um, platforms, just reusing it. If you're really aggressive and you really want to do things right, you can push this, um, video across YouTube ads, Facebook ads, Instagram, 25 mile radius around you, and, um, just collect more visibility, more leads this way. And it's going to give you like a strong presence in your market because you know what you're talking about and you're presenting something, you know, a product in a, like in a more complete way versus just waiting for the lead. You're more proactive in this, in this case. So I invite you to do this as soon as possible. So you can try and really, really see what's, what's happening when you do it. Um, 
it's just going to sell or bring more people in your, into your funnel on a daily and weekly basis without any more energy, time spent or uh, implication of yourself, which I think is the right way to do um, things these days. OK, we got these tools. It's free. It's at your disposal. I mean, there's no way um, you can skip on doing this. OK, number five, work your database. You've heard this before. Still, I, I, I see most car dealerships not doing it right, um, not attacking your own customers. People have purchased already in the store. Um, of course, different setups, you know, um, some stores are, you know, controlling about this, right? They they're hiring or you guys are hiring out to manage those lists. Um, that's what I've been doing, at least for more and more dealers now, um, just you know, by the, the nature of the business with the, the BDC. But if you're doing it in house or you're selling cars right now and you can get your hands on lists, uh, you know, it's really a good way to push uh, for more sales every single month. OK, it's tedious, but it's rewarding. OK, so you can leverage your CRM conquest list. But what I want you to know is it's really important to create value based outreach to qualify. OK, what I mean by that is that most often what I'll see in dealership is that <gasps> we need to create more sales. You know, people are like hit the panic button and they want to do more sales. So they just grab a list or they get a, a list from the, um, the OEM and they say, okay, so let's contact these guys. And then, you know, uh, we should get a few sales out of this, even if we do a bad job. Right. But the goal is really to start today for everyone you've been selling as soon as possible. So you don't have to be desperate about making the sale. You can actually push value, push for questions, push for like a free phone, like a phone call consultation, whatever, in preparation of uh, changing vehicles without applying pressure, because people, when um, they get pressured, they just run away, especially from dealerships. So the right way to do it is one, um, you know, if you can get a get a list and start and being like and be a little bit more patient about the prospects on, the, on this list. That's one point. And if you really want to be smart about it, you just create a uh, renewal or, um, you know, um, second sale nurturing sequence, call it whatever you want on the day of the delivery of the car. You already know you're selling 84 cars this month. So 84 of these people should be put in the pipeline or sequences, automated sequences to nurture them in um, preparation of their service visits uh, towards the, the next three four five years and their next sale in your store. OK, sounds simple. It is. It is simple. OK, but we're not doing it. Why? We're just not doing it. OK, what have we been doing just to, just to give you a glimpse um, in the BDC? So basically, whenever like a lead comes in, we nurture them. You know, we do everything we can to get them in the store. And then if it sells. That's good. Then when the car is marked as sold in our system, in the DMS and it pushed to the system, what we're doing is basically we're uh, adding the, adding them to a sequence that will nurture them um, for the next four years. OK, so as long as the dealership uses our services or, uh, you know, the, the, the prospect is not unsubscribed, we can send value based emails and SMS once in a while in a non threatening way, not salesy way just to make sure they come back to us time and time again, and they rebuy their next vehicle from us because we've been good to them. The bonus uh, point about this is that you you'll be um, generating more referrals this way as well, just because you're doing a great job. Um, people will feel more comfortable to sending you, um, you know, their friends and family. If you've been applying pressure and making like the, the transaction painful for them, you can bet that these people are not going to say send anyone they know or they like uh, to see you that just, that just makes sense. But whenever I meet with dealerships, that's what we're doing. So I'm not sure what, uh, what's up with that guys. So long-term strategy, again, set up the renewal process on day one, mark the soul, nurture for four years. We'll send them ser service offers, timely offers. Uh, there's also a sequence you can build in parallel. That's merely or barely like, that's really about the, the customer, the customer itself. So it's really, uh, about sending them uh, an email or SMS like a happy birthday or holiday holidays or vehicle anniversary uh, sequence that's doable. 
tips and tricks on their vehicles. So whatever they, they got to do to maintain the car in good shape, uh, safe, and also, um, you know, in, a, in the best value in preparation for trading it in in a few years. OK, so if you show that you have your customer's interest at heart, it's going to help you every single day. OK, so let's jump to number six. Hack number six, um, qualify prospects like a pro. This is still misunderstood car dealerships. I'm going to point to social media ads or social media a little bit more in this one, uh, just because I feel like most, more, most car dealerships or car salespeople have, um, you know, have not quite understood the differences between leads. So I've, I've heard the term high quality, low quality leads, uh, so many times in the last decade, it's not even funny. Um, it's just a matter of like thinking about what kind of people you're bringing in into the machine, the funnel, and then what whatever you want to do. If you're if you're if you're doing the same thing or talking to the customer the same way, if they call from a um, you know newspaper ad or if they clicked on a um, lead form on Facebook because they saw an ad while they were browsing whatever on a Friday night, or if um, you know they filled out a lead a complete form on a um, Tuesday morning from their office searching on Google, it's three different ball games. Okay. It's three different customers. Okay. There's, you got to make sure you can address these, um, with different, you know, in different ways. Okay. I just wanted to show you search. So Google search here. Okay. Someone start searching on Google Bing, whatever, right? It's intent based. They meant to search for a car, right? So they're pre-framed already to be shopping for cars speaking to someone potentially that will help them. Usually conversion is higher on those leads, but the cost of acquiring those leads are a little bit higher because the click is higher, saturated. Everyone's advertising on Google because what? Because it works. So what we can do instead or also is social. So it's interruption based advertising. So whenever you bring someone on your website from Facebook, from Instagram, TikTok, whatever, right? It's going to be because you interrupted what they were doing in the first place. It could be 100% interruption, could be 60% interruption. And what I mean by that is that Facebook, for example, they know who's been visiting and browsing cars for sale. So it's not 100% interruption. So basically you've probably seen that if you browse for a few cars, you'll get retargeted by the manufacturers, um, local dealerships, you know, about that brand or specific model. You've seen that before. This is why that's what we call retargeting or some people called uh, remarketing. Um, either way, just a matter of presenting someone um, like an ad or an offer to someone who might be interested um, in the future, you know, about what you're selling. And um, the third way to do it, which I'm really a fan of just because I've seen it work time and time again is video. So entertainment uh, based, advertising. It's not saturated just because most of these platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they're consuming a lot of video. People consume a lot of video, but there's not enough, you know, um, you know, videos to show people, right? So as soon as you get going, creating content, you'll take a head start and you'll take a lot of space in your market. So this is why I'm so pushing for you guys to do it. Okay. If you want to push this, I got like a whole course on how to do this with TikTok, and it applies to uh, Instagram and Facebook. It's really about like creating maximum amount of content with the least effort possible. Um, I'm also you can always check other videos of mine as well if that's um, one of your you know something you're considering, and you, you know you want to address that and start selling cars online with video. Okay, do it. Take me later. So. One key component, um, you know, when qualifying is really balancing between lead volume and lead quality. Some dealerships will have a lot of volume, low quality, and some people have really high quality, but if they want to sell 10 more cars from that volume, they can't make it happen. So the, the key here is always try to balance these things. So it makes sense on both sides. So if you add like high quality leads, this means you're probably closing a lot of these deals in, right? So you want to push, you hit a ceiling in this case. So example, if you're um, advertising on Google for $2,000 a month, the quality of leads is nice. 
um, people are coming in the store, they're, they're buying, the um, cost per sale makes sense. Maybe you're at three, 400, 500, depending on which car you're selling and what, whatever makes sense for your store. Um, you, <clears throat> you can, um, you know, increase the budget slightly until you hit a ceiling and until you see a diminishing return, if that makes sense. On your other, other hand, if you have a high lead volume and low quality, you must do something to introduce some friction into the lead generation process. So let's use Facebook as, as an example here. So you can generate $3 leads on Facebook while creating like amazing offers that don't exist and just have people autofill their information in, in, in the lead form. Problem is, when it when it's time to calculate the overall ROI and time spent on these leads, it's going to be equal or even worse to having 50, 60 or $80 leads in some cases, just because it was too easy for someone to trip into that form and just send that form, you know, that lead in, even if they're not really interested in shopping for a car. Whereas if you introduce a little bit more friction and you start asking a little bit more questions, um, that's what I've been doing in my agency just for like for the sake of increasing lead quality. Um, and it works. It's just like a matter of understanding we have to let go people, right? To let go of those leads. There's some leads that will never close anyway. So why should my team waste their time and energy on leads that are never gonna close? And we all know our like our like how car salespeople are or salespeople in general. We like to cherry pick, we like the best prospects, and we want to discard or say, you know what, this guy wasn't interested, he was not really into it. Um, sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong, you know? But the good like the good thing about this is that everything I'm talking about here can be done online. We're just introducing a few more questions, just try to balance the, you know, the, you know, the, the, the split before, between lead and uh, lead quality and lead volume, okay? So if that makes sense, you know, you can ask more questions. I, I really like quiz for these. And then you can even go up to asking the prospect to book an appointment with you guys, either on the phone or, um, you know, in the store, depending on whatever they, they filled out, uh, just to come in and say, you know what, I want to buy a car, be ready. And um, this uh, I've seen happen more times than I thought, right? So. You might tell me it's not a lot, but from whatever we're doing right now, we're seeing between one to 4% in, you know, from people click on, clicking on the ad to submitting all their information and then booking their own appointment without no human interaction. So basically the lead comes in, the appointment request comes in as well. People will show up, show up 70% of the time and we'll nurture them and make sure they show up by reminding them they got to you know, they'll show, we'll, um, you know, address that with the, with the team, the store and the car salespeople as well through the CRM, just to make sure everyone's ready and that you have someone, um, if you know, you have someone coming at 2 PM for a, um, you know, um, I don't know, like a 2024 Dodge challenger, you want to have that challenger ready, um, uh, for them to drive to show, you don't want to be like scrambling around for the keys, looking for it. And, um, that would translate in poor customer experience, of course. So, um, okay. So before I jump to hack seven, um, exactly here. Okay. So w when dealing with car loans or auto loans, lead generation programs, it's really important that you ask these questions just to make sure you can discard people. You won't be able to help example, someone who was on cash aid, let's say he's doing like, they're doing 800 a month. Um, you know, tops, uh, they're not going to be able to afford, afford a car or, um, maybe they just got into the country and they have no social security number or no credit history. You have to know as soon as possible. Of course, in some states or some ways you can really discriminate on based on that, on these prints, these principles, but as soon as you can make it happen, um, at least you can tell the truth to your customer as well. So I'd like to help, but this is preventing me um, from doing so and it's out of my control, but here's what you should be doing. Okay. So you'd be surprised because what I've been doing for the last few years is basically whenever there's something we can't like, you know, a lead that we can not create like, um, treat inside the, um, the CRM or the BDC, instead of like not answering anything and just not saying anything would just 
reply back and say, you know what, it's not possible for now. Um, we've seen other customers um, being able to purchase a car within six months in your situation. Make sure you do this A, B, C, D, E to maximize the chances of buying a new car when the time is right for you. Okay. And we'll be here to help if you need us. Of course, not all of these guys will come back, but you will gain trust. Some of these do come back. I know for a fact. And these people, when they've seen this, whenever they hear someone else who's, who needs a vehicle, need a loan, they'll refer it back to you, which is fairly efficient marketing, if you ask me, because it's it, like the only thing it really takes is just a quick program or, you know, uh, if this and that, um, you know, integrations in the CRM, just to make sure you can filter down people who are not eligible and then you know, just a quick email, all automated, no human interaction It's just a smarter way to, to, to work. Okay. So choose the type of offer, time based offer versus, versus evergreen offer. Always keep that in mind where, when creating offers online advertising. Okay. So time based urgency involved and date changing terms. Okay. These, these are typical ads you'll see in dealerships, especially for new. So here, um, you know, it's, it's those ads that you have to change every single month because the, the terms have changed, the interest rate has changed, the payment has changed, the, the cash down has changed, model has changed. You know, in automotive, we, we live by the month. Uh, that's the case here. This is what I'm talking about here. It needs more management and attention if you're generating your own leads. If you're car salespeople, if you're a marketing manager, you already know about this. It takes more involvement and more, you know, energy managing these things. Also higher, um, you know, uh, probability to, <laughs> to, um, to make some mistakes. What I'm looking for here when creating these ads is I want to create like an ad that's a little bit different than the other guys. So you can spy on other people on social media, whatever. And if they're, if it's co-opt money as well, um, you already know what the other guys are going to advertise. So what I'm, what I want you to consider here is really create like a different, slightly different offer, maybe about the payment, maybe about the, like the zero down or create variations about the offers and try to see what's really responding better in your market. So it could be 299, 3000 down, or it could be zero down 349 a month. Then you can test those two and try to see what, which one has the best conversion. And by the middle of the month or 10th or 15th, if you already know what's working well, you just pause the one that's not working well and just redistribute the, bu the, the budget on the, the, the one that works. Do not use fake urgency. People who have been shopping around for months now, they already know, even if they don't act really on the, whatever is going on right now, the, like the specific offer, especially in the market as of today, like as I'm doing this, chances are you're going to get a better deal if you wait. So you have to make it happen or in a way that you create like an offer that's one unique to your dealership or store and two, um, that they know they will lose. So what you must do in this case is that if you're creating an offer, you must change it next, next month. So it's not the same. If you keep showing up with the same, same offer time and time again, every single month, people are going to get like numbed to whatever you're telling them or sell or, or saying, because they know you're lying. Okay. Evergreen offer. This is super cool. Um, much different than the time-based offer. Okay. So evergreen basically speak by itself works all the time. You should always have evergreen offers in your store for new used and service department. So whenever you're not advertising time-based offers, because maybe you're changing the programs beginning of the month, that kind of thing. You should always have, you know, evergreens offers running. Okay. So evergreen offers for new might be just check out our new inventory. Um, new models can, came in demos, you know, a link to your demo page on your website or just for a lead or like a messenger on Facebook, uh, just to request and the latest demos or deals on demos. Um, car lines trade in, you know, trade in your car. This could be running 12 months um, per year. Used car uh, inventory again, promotions, you know, on used cars uh, and financing offers. Service department, really, really a good way to do it. Um, loss leaders year round, uh, take, make, uh, you know, take your appointment online. Um, customer reviews as well. This is considered, in my case, 
you know, as branding for the whole store. You know, people are happy to do business with you guys. You should really push these messages as far as you can. And in this case, um, in yellow here or in color, you'll see like time based offers. So free oil, ch oil change uh, during third quarter, maybe in the summertime when it's a little bit more, um, you know, uh, slow winter tires in the, in the winter. If it applies, obviously, if you're in Florida or Texas, well, it's snow in Texas now, but what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, summer tires here uh, it works in Canada as well, um, you know, and total maintenance during the winter time just to make sure the car is running perfectly. OK, so if that makes sense, I'm going to jump to number eight. So using AI and automations in your CRM. So I'm going to leave um, you guys on this point. Um, this is what I've been playing with for the last year now. And to my, you know, I've just been thinking. What if we could automate or, you know, systemize pretty much every everything we're doing inside dealerships? So I've been doing it in the BDC. Um, I've been doing it, you know, on um, you know, smaller scale with some dealerships, with some other stuff. We're just trying to help them, um, you know, increase lead quality just without giving like um, like a full BDC uh, to, to my clients, just giving some features away just to make sure we can qualify those those, those leads, increase return on investment. Um, it's it gets the product a little bit more sticky on my end as well. If my clients are doing well, they're staying with me, right? They don't want to jump ship to someone else who's promising, you know, greener, how do you say that greener pastures or greener, greener. Anyway, you know what I mean? So, um, what we've been doing is, uh, we place prospects in nurturing sequence, uh, based on buyer intent. Uh, and you could probably do the same depending on which CRM you, you, you have, um, for myself, we build something that's pretty much custom because we found that most or some automotive CRMs are not really flexible or up to date on that end, um, just talking about the right car to rise prospects. So if they came in for a Ram 1500, I want to talk to them like the offers and communications must be about the Ram 1500 can be really, um, general, right? Because that's what's happening in most car dealerships. If they are doing any follow-ups at all, um, that's what we, we've been doing. Lead scoring a uh, really efficient. So we'll score, we'll attribute points to prospects that they're clicking, opening emails, you know, visiting the website, doing actions, watching videos, um, you know, and it will score them in terms of buyer intent. So if let's say if they, you know, they collected five or 10 points within the, the last 30 days, we know we have to create a task automatically, by the way, for one of our agents to call them and try to see where they're standing because we know and we understand they're active. Okay. So this is where the CRM, BDC and CDP come into play. It's really a matter of just leveraging data um, that we have like zero and first party data uh, just to serve our customers a little bit better and be timely about what we're saying and you know how we're reaching out to them. Buying a car is really a, a matter of timing in, 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 in a way, right? You like most people don't buy cars every two months. Okay. Losing too much, too much money doesn't make sense. But if you can find like the perfect window where you speak to your customers, bring maximum value and be, you know, enjoyable as a salesperson or a dealership or a store, this is going to increase your chances tenfold because the other guys are not doing so. They're, you know, scrambling, putting pressure because they don't, they're, they don't know what they're doing. And, you know, you come in, you know, and you know what you're doing, you're calm, you're not putting pressure or you're applying the right amount of pressure. And uh, this will be, this will be a game changer for you. Trigger your action on links. Also, we can move people around from sequences, uh, depending on what people are saying or doing online. Uh, if we send an email and say, let's say we know they're interested in the Ford F-150, but it, we're not quite sure if they're looking for the XLT limited or even the, uh, the lightning, right? So we'll put links and, you know, say like something, Hey Mark, um, I noticed you were still looking at the F-150, which one of these three is more tempting to you? So, and like the base model, like work truck. Or is it like the limited, like luxury or the, the lightning? Okay. This is an example, but if they click on the lightning, it's going to move them, um, from sequence to sequence in our system, just to address whatever is related to that F-150 lightning. 
Um, it's going to tag, change the opportunity in the CRM. And it, like, it's going to do everything automatically just to make sure we know what we're talking about to that customer. And we're talking about the, like the EV F-150. This is a super good example because it's not going to be the same conversation with someone who's looking for a work, work truck, like gas powered work truck versus that EV just because they want to buy this, right? So it's going to be a lot different in this, in this case. And this is why it's important to be able to do that. Um, multi-level, multi-level follow-up strategies. So you can do content value promotion, streamline appointment booking. Okay. So what I mean by, by these four, um, angles. So you, you, you want to vary how you're calling to your customers or following up to your customers. It can't be always about offers and saving money and pay, payments and, you know, about, you know, them spending money with you guys. You got to be able to provide value through content you're doing yourself to content you find online as well. You know, if you find a cool review um, about the vehicle you're like they're interested in, like a positive review, you can send them, send that to them. They'll, they'll enjoy it and they'll appreciate you uh, trying to help. And maybe they'll have more questions and they'll come back to you and say, Hey, um, like it says here, this is a spec. Um, listen, I got, I got a tow boat, like would that work, that kind of thing. And then you can re-spark a conversation just from a simple piece of content. You just fetched on autoblog.com. Um, it took you 17 seconds and then it's done forever, depending on if you want to do mass mailing or, you know, automated sequence blasts. So, um, before we end this video, AI recommendation or conversations with customer on, on, on autopilot. So before we, we end this video, I want to talk to you about something I've been working with. It's been insane to be honest. Um, I've been playing around with AI, but most, um, specifically voice AI, um, in dealerships. Now I can, you know, have a prospect called the dealership be handled by an AI phone agent. Um, like for their inbound calls, I can have this AI agent just funnel, um, these customers as warm transfers to anyone in the store. I can have them book an appointment at service, even at sales. Um, I, I'll, I'll have the AI phone agent as well, you know, um, train on all the brand models, the dealership itself, where it's located. FAQ, most common questions asked by customers, and they'll be able to help. Um, it's been just crazy to see how it's being utilized right now. It's reducing stress and call volume at the store. It's increasing appointments. Uh, people are showing up and people are actually sharing more information than I, than I thought it would be. They would be with the AI. It's like, it, like they know they're speaking to a machine or maybe they don't know, but some people know, but they're more open to sharing some information, um, that they might want to keep closer to the vest if they are speaking to car salespeople, because I feel like that's my own assumption, but I feel people might think it's going to be used against them if they share too much information with car salespeople versus if they share information with a machine, with an AI, it's not going to happen. But what they don't know is that we're sending all this information in a bullet point form transcript, perfectly done, um, to the CRM, to the team. Um, it logs into the CRM, um, there's through various ways. Like we've been adapting like the whole integration with, with our dealer clients. And it's pretty amazing because at least the, 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 the phone call has been logged. Um, everyone in the store was kept doing what they were doing. So reduced, you know, energy and time spent on inbound calls as well, which are to be frank, a challenge in many, uh, many stores. Some people do it right. Some people do it a little bit, um, with a little bit more dis difficulty. Let's let, let, let's say it like that. Um, so in this case, we can always train this one to be like super sharp. Um, it's not perfect, but what, what's really happening is whenever something is wrong or, um, let's say the AI says something along the lines, uh, I'm sorry, I can't, ha I, I don't know how to answer this question. Um, would you like to speak to a human or can you rephrase that for me? Or can you explain what you're looking for? Whenever we get these keywords, you know, pronounced by the AI, I, I have a system, a script that will send me like, um, a portion of the, the phone call just to see what really happened and how much and, and how we can address that in the future to, um, correct that situation or outcome or 
next action because sometimes it's it's really like simple or someone is asking a question in a different way or weird weird way maybe and um now we've been, you know, able to tackle it down this way. And the cool thing about this is that when it's brand specific and general knowledge specific, um, like if it happens into one store, it's going to be fixed for everyone. Everyone's learning at the same time or every single store is training the other store, even though they might be not in the same group. Right. But everyone's benefiting from from this from happening. So um, it's been really cool to see. And what I'm testing now is, you know, outbound calls. And I've been piloting a few dealerships as well. So if a, like a lead is submitted on a third party, such as CarGurus, you know, AutoTrader on the, or on the website, on Facebook, whatever, right? As long as it comes in um, CRM, I can have the AI call 30 seconds later or three seconds later and qualify that customer and try to book an appointment in the store or at least the next step. Or, um, you know, it could be like a phone call with a human, with a, with a sales rep. Um, but it's been pretty amazing because we're really increasing the contact rate because people really were just on the site a few seconds ago. So this calls again, we're logging all the information and it's going inside the deal, like uh, the dealership CRM all automatically. It's been insane to see. And it's, um, you know, f from, from what I've seen or the feedback I've gotten from dealerships, it's it's really like a cheap alternative, um, cheaper than most people thought it, at least. Um, just to make it happen, like put it in place, it's quick, it's easy. It's, um, you know, it's you can really improve on this. And as I've been training more and more dealerships or more AI on different brands, um, most likely what you're, like the brand you have right now, we already trained uh, the AI on it, so it's already available. So. I, I'm I'm hoping to get these, um, you know, AI phone agents um, ready in a few days. You know, when I'm working with dealerships, like just a couple of weeks right now or one week delay, and then we can install the thing. We we we'll, we'll test, we'll see, we'll double check with the teams if the outcome is right, if the if it matches your like the store's DNA, that kind of thing. So it's it, it's been pretty amazing, and like the the cool thing about this is that it's only going to improve. Um, right now, I got English, Spanish speaking AI, and I'm expecting I'll be able to have more languages as we go. So it's pretty, it's, it's been very, very interesting to see what's going on so far just by automating using AI um, and all, all that kind of thing. You can always, uh, just before we go, send an automated review request through AI, um, you know, and tr try to feel, you know, the warmth of the customer. So if they really want to, you know, if they're happy about their transaction, you can have them. Okay, cool. So let me just send you a text message with the link for like a Google review. That would mean the world for us if you could fill that out right now. Okay. So the AI will trigger, um, in our system, uh, an SMS to be sent an email uh, to be sent to that customer just to prompt them to fill out a review. On the other hand, if they're collecting like a bad review, uh, it's pretty cool that they can at least, uh, you know, complain to someone who doesn't exist, who has no emotions. And then we can gather all the information um, in a structured way, send that to the management team, uh, have them call, whatever, like do whatever action we, we decide to do, right? Whether it's automated or, um, you know, in person, because like at some extent it could be automated, it could be a video of the, of, of the, of the general manager, uh, you know, offering something or, you know, at this point, it's really based on what the dealership wants to do. I'm not saying it's a great idea, but I was just thinking about it. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching the whole video. If you're here, it means you're committed to uh, get better at this, this stuff, whether you're selling cars, um, you're part of a car dealership or maybe an, an agency that's trying to learn like cutting edge technology or tactics to help your clients. Feel free to experiment with these hacks. Let me know in the comments if you have questions. Um, really important if you want to do it well, attack one component at a time, one idea at a time, and try to master it before jumping to the next one. Trying to apply all of this at the same time might be complicated. Uh, if you need um, uh, any help with anything, any element or idea in this video, drop a comment, question, concern, complaint. You know, if you hate it, let me know. If you'd like me to share more tools and documents 
um, to help you achieve what we just discussed. Let me know comment and let me know in the comments as well. I check all of these. Um, if you're selling cars um, and you'd like a simplified version of my CRM slash BDC or mostly CRM, let me know. Also, I'll drop a comment. Uh, I'll drop a link in the description as well to reach out. And I got one last ask for you guys. If you've enjoyed this video today, make sure to subscribe and like this video. Share it to someone that might benefit from this as well. Maybe it's a colleague. Maybe that's someone that's in the industry. Um, it, it's really cool when you guys share the content I've been putting out. So make sure to do so. Until my next video, take it easy. Yeah.